Hey guys, uh, today we're gonna be talking about IoT Living app. That is one of the most commonly used app for our, our attack range cameras, uh, especially for those cameras who require uh, remote access. So if you want, if you prefer to have remote access with those cameras, you can actually use this app. Now, the good thing with this app is it's absolutely free. You don't pay any charges for, for or like ongoing charges or subscription free for this camera for this camera app, right? So all you gotta do is make sure you have an Android or Apple device, uh, such as an iPad or an iPhone, or let's say a Samsung tablet or a Samsung phone. It's absolutely free. You simply go on your Play Store or App Store and download the app from there. So I'm already on my Play uh, on my App Store. All I'm going to do is go and search and download the app. So the app is called IoT Space L I V I N G. Search. And when you search it, the app comes right at the, right at the top. It's among the top three, which comes on the page. It's a blue color app, which says IoT Living next to it. Simply download the app on your phone. Now, uh, obviously it is not compatible with the desktop. So the app is not available for MacBooks and Windows computers. You just need to make sure that it, you've got an iPhone, a Samsung phone or a tablet or an iPad to, do, to uh, make it run with that camera. Now, once you got the app already on your phone, simply open it and it does come up with some notifications on as a pop-up on the screen so when any any of those notifications that come on the screen make sure you allow them because what will happen if you miss on one of those allowing options and don't allow it it might not work idly so you just make sure that you allow all the pop-ups that comes on the screen and once your app is done we can then go ahead with setting up the camera All right, so now since the app has been downloaded and ready to go, all you gotta do is get your camera, any of the away attack range cameras, and plug it to the power and get your SD card inserted. When you got the SD card in and the power is on, just look for the light that comes on the device. It normally comes with the static red light, but it starts flashing in blue, blue and red color. If you, if you notice that the light hasn't flashed for next 10, 15 seconds after plugging it into the power, all you can do is hit the reset button on the device. Obviously reset button is always there on those cameras. Just hit that and push that five times and then just wait for another 20, 30 seconds till you notice the light starts flashing. The flashing of the light actually tells us that the camera is ready to sync with your device. And now to sync the camera with your device, all you gotta do is go into the settings of your device, of your iPad or your phone. Simply go into settings, go to the Wi-Fi list and look for a network that comes as Blink network. Now the Blink network is basically a camera network which is allowing this device to connect with the camera. And since I can see a Blink network came up, that means it's actually my camera is ready to link up this device with it. Um, to make sure of the last three digits of the camera matches the Blink network that just helps you in knowing that this is actually your camera's network. Click on it. The initial password is always 01234567891. When you enter the password, click on join. And now your device will ready will be ready to, to connect with the camera. Now you will notice a tick sign next to Blink and it will show you a Wi-Fi logo on right on the top of the device but sometimes it does say and basically all the time it says no network or no internet connection which is obviously nothing to worry about because this is obviously not an internet connection it's a camera network right so if you see no internet connection just, just ignore it go ahead with the next step because all you got to focus on is a tick sign and a wi-fi logo on your screen that's it so connect it simply come out of the screen go back to our app we just, which we just downloaded so go to the IOT living and now we are back on our page but you may notice that we are still connected to the Wi-Fi coming out of the camera all you're gonna do next is click on the plus sign on the top right corner of the screen it will give you three options saying first add manual ad and product video guidance just click on manual ad when you're on the manual ads you don't need to fill up anything all you gotta do is click on search camera from LAN so when you click on search camera from LAN it will straight away should tell you the camera is available to connect it says camera found one the name of the camera just click on that and just name it let's say i call it uh, office 
you can name it whatever you like just to make it easy for you for later if you have multiple cameras and in that vicinity or in different locations and click on the tech sign so when you click on the tech sign it will say congratulations device has been added so simply click on ok and it will take you back to your to the main page which is my device now when you are on my device sometimes it does give you an option saying time zone you can you can then click on yes and click on time zone so it can actually allow you to uh, and to choose the time zone you are in um, but it will then take you back to my device let's click on play and here we go it says the device is the uh, default password you can e ignore it for now just to make sure that the setup has been completed click on play and here we go so the camera is ready to connect now this way the camera has now established a a network or a connection with the device within the range you have to be in the range of camera to see it like this great so now when the camera has been added we let's go ahead and establish remote viewing for the camera so to establish the remote viewing all you got to do is while the camera is online and you're connected to the camera's network which is the blink network Still connected to Blink, perfect. Now what we're gonna do is go into the settings. So settings is right at the right bottom corner of the page. Just click on settings. And it will then allow us to go further into the further settings. So the important step to establish remote viewing is keep your password of your network handy, uh, like the home Wi-Fi network. Uh, get it ready because now this is the time where we're gonna put in the password for that network. So all you're going to do is go into network information and look for the available networks there will be quite a few networks around you which are obviously in the range you'll find the name of your network that let's say i can see my network name here and simply enter the password so cool when i enter the password all i need to do is make sure i click on the tick sign it gives you an option saying done at the bottom but make sure you click on the tick sign at the top right corner because that will allow this device to know that what network I need to be connected with and what this remote viewing does it allows you to actually view this camera from anywhere in the world it will go in connecting and then it will go online just wait till it goes online and that means the camera is ready to view from anywhere in the world Great, so now since we have established the remote access to the device and obviously we can see it online, the next thing which um, is, is high in demand is setting up motion detection on this. So let's set up the motion detection on this camera. All you gotta do is making sure you got a memory card inside the device already um, and then all you gotta do is go next into the settings. So just click on the settings again, record settings. When you go and record settings, it gives you three options. It says, do you want to record when only there is a motion or you want to constantly record? So go into record settings and then select what mode you would like to choose. Now, obviously this camera works in online and offline mode. So this window is really important. You will let the camera know by going under the app that you will be selecting, you will be only recording when there's a, there's a motion by selecting alert or by selecting full time. When you click on full time, the maximum recording it makes is of 900 seconds, which is roughly around 15 minutes and so. It jumps onto the next clip and the next clip and so on. And But if you go in alert settings, what it does it actually every 60 seconds it looks for any motion if there's a motion going on it will save the clip on the on the card and it will keep go keep keep recording and keep recording until there is a motion so you, all you got to do is select the type of mo mode you would like to select and click on the tick sign so let's say i want to select i want the camera to record on motion i'll just select alert and click on tick sign it will start recording everything when there is a movement in front of it and um if you want to see what it has recorded all you got to do is Let's say you want to see what motion detection or full-time recording it has made. You can come back on the main page, click on this image icon at the bottom, and then click on SD card. The clips will come under SD card here. Let me show you that again. So just simply go into the second from the settings icon, click on that. It comes up with local download and SD card. Click on SD card. It will allow you to see all the clips that it has recorded. Let's, and when you click on one of those clips, it will tell, give you three options saying play, either play or download it on your phone directly so you don't have to access the camera card. 
simply click on play and it will actually show us our remote clip right here there you go all the all the clips come here with a timestamp on it cool and this is literally about motion detection settings all right so now when motion detection and the record settings has been done you can actually get notified with any movement that has occurred from this app or directly on your phone so all you, to activate that all you gotta do is go into the settings again and this time we will select motion detection settings when you click on motion detection settings it gives you an option right at the top so you need to make sure that the motion alert is on just make sure you turn it on select the level of sensitivity you would like to do depending on the space and the area you're covering most of the way tech cameras actually do is work on night mode and day mode so you can actually select high or medium or max depending on your scenario there and then you can select at the bottom left region total area or right region so you can actually select the area you want to cover let's say this is facing towards one direction you can do it otherwise you can go total area and right at the bottom you have got remote notification option just make sure you click you click on it so it just turns on so every time there's a movement it will actually notify you and always make sure to click on the tick sign at the top right corner so it saves the settings and that's how you can get that setup done great so a very commonly asked question is about volume settings obviously all of our attack cameras actually have got audio and video both so to make sure that your volume is bumped up all the way all you're gonna do is uh, go into the settings again and then select volume settings this time which is right at the bottom here above infrared settings so click on volume settings so if the camera does not have have a speak feature which some of them do you can take all the way you can put the speak volume all the way down but make sure the listen in volume is all the way at the top so go crank it up all the way to number 10 and just click on the tick sign and this will enable the camera to listen everything which what each of these is viewing and the video will have an audio as well and this is how you can actually set up the volume settings Great, and now to make sure that the recording, because every recording it makes has a time zone on it, to make sure that the time is correct, all you gotta do is go all the way back into settings, all the way down to set up time zone. Obviously I'm in WA, so we will be selecting sync with phone. So you just click on sync with phone. If it gives any errors, all you're gonna do, all you can do is click on next to the time so device time zone. You can click on this side and select the time zone you are in. For example, I am in plus eight, so I can click on plus eight and just click on tick and it will then select that and then save this time zone. It may reboot the device, but it will then sync up with the current time zone we have selected. And just wait for it till this restarts and it will take you back to the main page. All of these settings will be done when the camera is online so just make sure the camera is connected throughout this process and that will set up the time so oh yeah all right so for manual recording before we go deep dive into manual recording the main page you're going to see always is going to be this one under my device they have four icons right at the bottom just quickly recapping what they are so the first one is a bell icon which is notifying notification icon if you click on it it will basically allow you to notify every push message that's happening here you go you got a just got a message coming up um so you just need to make sure that if you want to get a remote notification on your phone just click on this there should be no cross on it the next one is a share icon if you want to share this camera with someone else like your partner or someone all you can do is click on this it will generate this QR code. So you don't, so the other person do not have to do the whole process right from the scratch. All they can do is download the app on their phone and then scan this QR code from your phone and through the app, they will be able to set up the camera on their phone as well. And so you can actually share this camera among five people. Um, the next one is an image icon here. Image icon allows you to access directly the memory card and by now we have got few clips because there was a lot of movement going on so it will just allow you to access the card by simply going onto this window 
Now you might be thinking what is local and download. So basically if I have downloaded my last, if I download my last clip, let's say I download this, it will download the clip directly on my phone. And then with the help of If I go and download, it will show me my downloaded clip right here. It will just, what it does, it segregates the downloaded clip because you don't have to then uh, save everything on your phone. You can download the specific clip which you want to collect as an evidence directly on your phone app. It will just segregate it and stack it up all over here. And then lastly, let's say we are remotely viewing someone by clicking on the play button. This is how in the real time I'm watching someone actually, uh, I'm watching what the camera is looking at, right? Not only you can listen to it by clicking on the speaker sign over here, but you can actually great, uh, get, enhance the quality of recording or quality of viewing by switching SD to HD by just simply clicking on it once. So you can actually bump up the quality from 720p all the way to 1080p and this is how you can actually enhance it. Now let's say I want to actually take a screenshot of this view. If I'm looking at something, I want to save it. I can click on snapshot or I can actually record in real time. So let's say I'm watching in real life, I can click on record and this way it will allow us to not only view but record at the same time. It will give you the time over here. Let's say I have stopped, I want to stop recording. I can click on record again, go in my storage and in local, it will actually stack up all the manual recording files right here. And then you can actually save this file directly on your phone by clicking on this icon. It will allow you to save it directly on your phone. Yeah. And that's literally pretty much it about this IoT Living devices. If you have any questions around it, feel free to reach us out. We are happy to assist you.